right, let's go ahead and get started. Hello and welcome. My name is Martez Reed, Director of Technical Marketing with Morpheus Data. And in this particular session, we're gonna walk through the Terraform integration with the Morpheus platform. So we're walking through a Morpheus tech brief. And what a tech brief is, is really a very targeted specific piece uh, of content uh, in this case, we're walking through the Terraform integration, as I mentioned, and so we'll walk through what it is, kind of the value proposition, and then also step through how it actually works in practice. So before we get started, for those that are unfamiliar with the Morpheus platform, quick background in terms of what the use for the Morpheus platform is. Morpheus platform supports integration with um, 20 plus clouds, so public and private cloud, so things like AWS, Azure, GCP, um, VMware, vSphere, Nutanix, OpenStack, and really what's the, the focus of the platform when we start talking about cloud management platform or a self-service cloud consumption uh, platform in this particular case. So the three key areas I typically talk about are workload lifecycle management. So being able to manage the lifecycle of a workload, say something like a, an instance or a virtual machine, as well as some of the supporting infrastructure. So being able to provision that and leverage automation and orchestration capabilities along with that, being able to perform day two operations on virtual machines, on instances in a self-service fashion, and then finally being able to deprovision or decommission with automation tied to it as well. So when we think about lifecycle management as it relates to integration with automation, so being able to integrate with things like IPAM, DNS, um, backups, all of the things that typically are required for production workloads, being able to automate that process with our 90 plus out of the box integrations, uh, as well as capabilities from a scripting and automation perspective. In addition to that, another core area of the platform is automation and orchestration capabilities outside of the workload lifecycle management. So being able to leverage the platform for day two operations to be able to provide access to bash scripts, PowerShell scripts, Ansible playbooks in a self-service fashion for provisioned workloads, as well as being able to leverage the, the capabilities of the platform outside of the context of workloads to be able to run those same types of scripts and automation on a schedule. Um, as well as provide those in an on-demand fashion, uh, as well as self-service to potential uh, business users or junior uh, engineers. And then finally, the other key area of the platform is costing and analytics, being able to get visibility into uh, public cloud spin, as well as start to look at showback or uh, potentially chargeback for on-prem resources, and then being able to get things like right size guidance, uh, as well as visibility into uh, how to help with cloud spend. And then finally layered on top of that, we start to talk about how can the platform can be consumed. Number of different ways, ITSM, one of the big uh, integrations that we have is a ServiceNow application to be able to expose Morpheus uh, constructs and things like instances and operational workflows through ServiceNow, also being able to tie into that from a, a CMDB perspective. And then also, an API, a CLI, uh, power user, um, user interface, as well as a service catalog for easy self-service capabilities. So now that we understand what the platform is, let's uh, finally, we have the, the platform security. So looking at things like SSO, multi-tenancy, role-based access control and audit logging. So now let's jump into Morpheus and Terraform. So HashiCorp Terraform, for those that are unfamiliar with HashiCorp Terraform, it is an open source infrastructure as code tool for declaratively creating and managing infrastructure. So typically leveraged for uh, provisioning public cloud resources, on-prem uh, resources, anything really that has a, an API endpoint it can talk to and pr provision as well as manage some of the, the settings for those resources. It is a single compiled binary written in Golang that is executed via the command line. Uh, so it is super easy to get started with. So it is literally download the, the Terraform binary and start creating resources from there. Resources are defined using the HashiCorp configuration language, oftentimes shortened to HCL. So it is a, a domain specific language that is utilized to declare and manage resources. 
And then finally, as I mentioned, being able to declaratively abstract the uh, interaction or oftentimes the CRUD, which is create, read, update, and delete operations with the REST API. So that's where we start to get into the declarative aspect of Terraform, where I can specify what I want uh, and what I want the resource to look like or model. Uh, and what happens is Terraform handles all of the, the various API calls on the back end. So now that we understand a little bit about Terraform and what it is, um, and it's definitely a, a widely popular tool that most organizations are either looking at or already using. And so one of the things with the, the integration with the Morpheus platform is how can we leverage the, the benefits and the capabilities of Terraform within the platform? So one of the things we recently released in um, the platform in 5.3.1 was Terraform instance types. So Terraform instance types enable the execution of Terraform code within the Morpheus platform. So for those that are aware of the existing constructs in the Morpheus platform, so there are instances uh, as well as blueprints and, and applications in the platform, but those leverage the, uh, the Morpheus integrations with the clouds. And so in this case, we're leveraging Terraform as sort of that, that intermediary or that proxy. So what happens is Morpheus executes the Terraform and then the Terraform provisions the, the workload. So the benefit of this is being able to have centralized state management. So not needing to, to manage states separately or in oftentimes what happens is it's states managed in S3 bucket or um, various other object storage. Uh, mechanisms dependent upon clouds. And so with Morpheus, there's the ability to uh, have that be fully taken care of in the, and encrypted in the database. In addition to that, being able to provide Terraform in a self-service fashion. And we'll walk through what that looks like in the platform. So other thing with Terraform instance types is being able to support uh, automation workflows, or in this case, phase-based execution with the Terraform. So being able to leverage the automation orchestration capabilities of the Morpheus platform to provision, uh, to handle integrations as it relates to automation. So being able to run an Ansible playbook or a, a, a bash script or a PowerShell script as part of the execution of the, the Terraform, but then also being able to leverage that throughout the, the life cycle of the workload. And then one of the other things uh, that's really a benefit of the Terraform instance types is being able to have that composability of the, the, the instance types within the, the platform to be able to create larger objects in the Morpheus platform via Morpheus blueprints. So being able to, to take Terraform that, let's say, spins up a, a DynamoDB database in AWS, and then a, a Lambda function, and then an EC2 instance, and be able to compose that into uh, a single blueprint that can be requested for a larger, uh, more holistic stack. And as I mentioned, the, the workflow automation, so it, it's really one of the, the big benefits of the, the Morpheus platform is being able to bring Terraform together with the existing automation orchestration capabilities of the platform. So what, as I mentioned, what happens is Morpheus calls Terraform and executes Terraform. Um, so natively without the, the Terraform instance types. Um, so prior to this, there were Terraform uh, blueprints within the platform. And this shows the difference between the Terraform blueprints and the instance types and the power that the instance types provide. So what happens is Morpheus calls Terraform, Terraform provisions, in this case, an EC2 instance. And then typically what would happen is there's some sort of integration between Terraform and the automation. Oftentimes it's things like local execs or even remote execs, or oftentimes some, some sort of glue code that ties Terraform and the automation together. It could be Ansible playbook, it could be shell script, it could be bash scripts, whatever it ends up being. And then at that point, the automation interfaces with the instance to configure the instance for post-provisioning operations. So one of the things that's, as I mentioned, extremely powerful is being able to leverage Morpheus automation natively with Terraform provision resources. And so it could be an instance, it could be um, a VPC, it could be a networking construct, could be any various um, construct that Terraform can inter interface with and create. In this example, we're using the EC2 instance. And so if we look at what happens, similarly, the Morpheus interfaces with Terraform, Terraform provisions the instance, but instead of Terraform integrating with the automation, what we can then do is leverage the, uh, the workflows, as I mentioned, via Morpheus to actually interface with the automation. So this could be something like uh, 
an Ansible tower, it could be a puppet enterprise, it could be a chef, it could be bash script, it could be PowerShell script, it could be Python script, whatever it ends up being, being able to tie that automation onto the, the Terraform execution. So in this case, it's an Ansible playbook, and then being able to leverage that integration to provision the instance. And what this does, as I mentioned, is remove the need for that glue code, but also provides the, the capability, uh, the robust capability of the automation integrations within the Morpheus platform. And then finally, oftentimes, uh, what our enterprise customers are looking for, if they have ServiceNow, is being able to tie in that ServiceNow to front end that automation. So being able to take advantage of the benefits of Terraform and the, the Ansible's and the Ansible Towers um, and, and a lot of the, the, the forward leading or uh, sort of cloud native automation models to be able to do that in number one in a self-service fashion, um, but also align with governance best practices. And so now that we've, we've walked through some, some use cases and, and how it works, let's jump into how it actually gets configured. So what would start off is the installation of Terraform. So the Terraform binary on the Morpheus node. One thing to mention is that there is a documented list of supported versions for Terraform in the Morpheus documentation under guides and supported integration versions. So that would be the, the place to check for a specific, whether a specific version of Terraform is supported or not. So you would verify that information. You would then install the uh, supported version, Terraform version on the Morpheus node. And then we'd start walking through. So in this case, we're walking through hosting the Terraform code in a Git repository. And so after I've installed Terraform, I would then add an SSH key pair for the Git service account in the Morpheus UI to access my source control um, if it's not already there. I would add the Git integration for the Terraform code. Creation of Terraform spec templates or template. Uh, create Terraform secrets variables. And then the creation of an instance type and layout. So we're actually gonna walk through uh, a number of these steps right now. So logged into our Morpheus um, platform. And so the first thing we saw was adding the, um, the keys, the SSH keys. So in this case, I've already added the, the Git key in the, the platform. So this allows the Morpheus appliance to interface with my source control server. So in this particular case, it's GitLab. And so I've created uh, that key pair. I've added the um, private key to the Morpheus platform. And what's been done on the, the GitLab side is that the, the repository that I want Morpheus to be able to access, I've granted that key or that, in essence, that, that account access to, um, to those particular repositories. And then from there, what we have is add the Git integration for the Terraform code. So let's take a look at that. So in this particular case, I added a Git integration and I specified um, where the, the, the Git source was, specified the, the default branch. And as we can see, I specified the, the key pair that I wanted to utilize to integrate with that particular repository. So from there, we then start to, to look at the creation of Terraform spec templates. And so we'll take a look at what we wanna do from a provisioning perspective. So in this particular case, we want to provision the DynamoDB database in AWS utilizing Terraform. And what we wanna do is we want to utilize the composability of Terraform spec templates to decouple um, a number of the, the Terraform constructs so that I can reuse them across various different resources that I want to provision in the platform. And so if we take a look at the, the code, there are a number of things that are, are common to, to Terraform code. Number one, number of variables to specify inputs to the, the code. Then we have the provider, which specifies what the integration should be for Terraform. In this particular case, the provider that we're going to use is the AWS provider for Terraform to interface with AWS and provision the resources that we need. We also want to instantiate or create the, the actual DynamoDB resource. And then in this case, we also want to have DynamoDB specific variables as well. And so if we take a look at some of the things, so we have providers, 
so I broke out the provider code to so have uh, an option to specify that by itself. That's going to be a spec template that we specify in the platform. We notice that we have variableized or parameterized um, region, access key, secret key as well. We'll take a look at some of those. We also specified variables. So parameterization of some of those are here for the access key and the secret key. The region has also been parameterized. And within the Morpheus platform, what we want to do is we want to be able to specify the region that the DynamoDB is provisioned to in uh, as a custom option. So we see here we specified a default uh, variable as the custom option, in this case, AWS region. Go to the DynamoDB. And so similar to the, the other uh, Terraform code, there's a number of parameterized variables that we're going to specify. But in this case, it, we're simply provisioning a DynamoDB database. And then finally, there are the, um, the database specific variables that we wanted to parameterize that we're passing custom options as the default. And so if we take a look at our spec templates. Yep. So there's a question that came through. Is there a dedicated Terraform provider for Morpheus? Or you would just simply use the dedicated provider for each type of supported uh, managed resource provider? So that's a great question. There is a Morpheus Terraform provider. And so this gets into um, two mechanisms in, in terms of how you want to integrate and interface with um, your cloud resources, or your, in this case, uh, potentially also your on-prem resources. And so the Terraform provider can leverage the existing integrations with Morpheus. Let's say I want to deploy um, an application stack on VMware. I could leverage the, the existing constructs in the Morpheus platform without utilizing Terraform for the provisioning. But right now, the, the Mor Morpheus Terraform provider is uh, being worked on to be able to provide the ability to interface with Morpheus and specify, I want a particular application stack or I want an instance and be able to call Morpheus and have Morpheus take care of all the provisioning. And so it's not having uh, the execution of Terraform, it's Terraform calls Morpheus and then Morpheus handles the, the integration with the cloud resources. Um, there's also uh, potentially sort of inception manner where if you, you so chose to, you could utilize the Morpheus Terraform provider to call Morpheus, and then Morpheus could then call Terraform uh, to interface with those clouds. Um, so in the case of just utilizing Morpheus for the interfacing of the clouds, there would just be the single Morpheus Terraform provider that would be used to then handle the provisioning of those resources. Hopefully that answers the question. So, in response to that, the they're wondering if the, the Terraform provider for Morpheus is the official. Yes, that is the, the official um, Morpheus Terraform provider. It is currently still in development. Um, so uh, it's also open source. So for those that want to contribute, feel free to, to contribute with pull request. All right, great questions. Um, and so we walked through the Terraform code and we know what we want to, to bring into the Morpheus platform. So being able to specify those as spec templates. So what's gonna happen is the spec templates are going to be leveraged to uh, bundle those up in a composable fashion into the instant Terraform instance type that we want. So let's walk through that. So I've got a number of um, spec templates that I've specified already. And so if I click on one of these, we'll see it maps back to a given resource. So in this case, I, I have a spec template for default variables for AWS. And so this would likely be something that would be reusable across instance types where I specify the certain things that I want. It could be just uh, the credential uh, variables. It could be additional variables for things like tags or additional constructs that apply to all the resources that I may provision. So as we see this, um, we specified the repository that we added as via the integration. We specified the file path. And in this case, the file path maps right back to variables.tf, which is this file. And so as we go through this, we start to see, okay, how are things tied together? How are things mapped? 
So the spec template is mapped to, in this particular case, a given Terraform file. So I've got spec templates for the default variables that we saw, the, the provider, the DynamoDB um, instantiation, as well as the variables. So the four files, we have four spec templates in this particular case that map to these four files. And so that rolls up into a, a layout, but we'll take a look at what the, the, the higher level instance type looks like. So we have an instance type similar to other instance types in the, uh, the Morpheus platform. In this particular case, the layout that we have is a Terraform instance type layout. So if I click on this, we can see that I've, I've given a name, the technology is Terraform. Uh, we have the, the spec templates that we saw. So the spec templates map all the way back down to the Terraform code. And the other thing we have had now is the option types. So being able to expose the uh, declaration of those variables to the end user, uh, or in this case, it's myself, for the DynamoDB database name, the AWS region, the hash key, and the hash key type. Um, these option types, some of them are text variables or text option types, and then some of them are selects that I've created um, associated option list with to be able to simplify the actual um, instantiation of that resource. One of the other things that we'll notice is a TF bar secret. And so for those that are familiar with Terraform, um, as well as public clouds or, or any sort of uh, interface with uh, Terraform, there's the need to specify some sort of credentials. In this case, I've created a TF bar secret. So the question becomes, where's the, the TF bar secret? Um, the TF bar, TF bar secret is a cipher item that I've specified the, uh, the variables, similar to a, a TF bar file that's leveraged in Terraform, uh, sort of just native Terraform. And so I've created a instantiation of that that specifies the exit key and the secret key. So if I go into tools and I go to Cypher, we can see that I have, spe have specified the AWS credentials in, the, um, in Cypher. And so by specifying CF bars and then slash the name of the actual uh, item, then that allows me to expose that to, in this particular case, the Terraform instance type. And so let's jump back to our instance layout. And so we also see we would have the option to specify a workflow as part of the execution. In this case, we're not going to specify a workflow. Um, but at this point, we've, we've created all the resources that we need to be able to instantiate um, our DynamoDB database. So in this case, um, what I've actually done already is created a service catalog item. For those that are familiar with the Morpheus platform, it allows you to simplify the provisioning process for a given resource. In this particular case, since it is an instance, uh, I can roll that up to a service catalog item. So let's go to the service catalog persona. And we see here that I have a DynamoDB database catalog item. So I'll click order. And what we see is a number of uh, options that we can specify that map right back to the option types that we associated with the Terraform instance type. So in this case, we will do uh, provide a name. We have select the AWS region that we want to provision it into. In this case, this maps to a, uh, an option type, which maps back to an option list in the Morpheus platform to provide a, a select list of AWS regions that can be provisioned into. Um, that obviously the, the, the list could be extended or it could be shrunk down, or it could not even be exposed at all. Um, it could be something where you specify uh, something like uh, environment that then picks the, the AWS region for you. So in this particular case, we're just going to do US East 1. We're going to specify hash key, um, the construct for the DynamoDB database uh, for it to know. Specify the hash key type. So this is also an option, uh, option list, an option type associated with an option list that we specify what we want the hash key type to be. In this particular case, I want a string. And then I click order. 
And so it's going away and creating the, the database. One thing I do wanna show is that we have an existing um, database that has been provisioned via Terraform. And we see in this particular case, um, I've associated tags, um, but the, the layout is the, the TF DynamoDB um, layout that we see. So one other thing I do wanna show is, I'll jump back to the standard view for the instance is, we see the, the demo database is being provisioned now, is state management. So being able to interact and interface with the, uh, the state of the, the Terraform code or the Terraform uh, instantiation itself. So we see the spec templates that were associated with our given um, instance type. We see that they're attached to the source template. And so what that means is that they have not diverged from the source template. Um, for those uh, power users or administrators that may want to, to be able to, to update or modify the actual underlying code, um, can come into to edit. And what we're getting right here is a warning that says editing the spec will detach it from underlying source template. Um, typically, you wouldn't do this, um, especially given our scenario where the, the code is hosted in our source control. So I would simply change the, the code in my source control to facilitate updates. Um, one of the things we see is the, the state. We see the, the plan of the Terraform execution. We see inputs. So the inputs that were uh, detected via the Terraform code itself, it detected that we're using the AWS provider. Um, outputs, if I had specified outputs in my Terraform code. One of the things we also see is uh, drift, drift status. So specifying that in this particular case, what the, the platform knows about the resources via Terraform um, has not drift from the desired state. Other options that we have are refresh state. So being able to ensure that the state is refreshed to uh, number one, check for drift detection, um, but also make sure that our code lines up and then being able to apply state. So one of the things with apply state is being able to, in this case, update the, the variables that we specified during the provisioning process. So if there's um, something I want to change, um, I can do that here. So it might be I want to change the database name. In this particular case, it's a, a destructive operation as it will destroy the database and, and recreate it. Um, but that's um, a, a Terraform construct as it needs to recreate that database given that name. Um, if I had a, a different variable that I could ha had exposed that was non-destructive. I would come in here, I would change the variable, and then the, the Terraform would execute and make that change. Um, in this case, as an example, I will do the, the non I will do the destructive operation um, to see uh, what the process is. So right here we see it's doing some validation of the instance. Um, so it's running the plan operations on the, the back end to verify if the, uh, the code changes are appropriate and, and throw uh, an error if necessary. So one of the things that we'll see is that the, the, the in this case, the name has been changed, but what's happening is if we scroll to the bottom, for those that are familiar with uh, Terraform, you'll see that there's a one to add and a one and one to destroy. And so what that means is that this would be a destructive operation because it's telling us that our DynamoDB database uh, table must be replaced. And so that would mean destroying the existing resource and recreating the new resource, in this case, because we've changed the name and it forces a replacement. And so I may decide, you know what, that's not exactly what I want to do. And so I'll click previous and I'll click close, as opposed to actually going through the process of destroying my DynamoDB database. Um, so at a high level, we've walked through being able to, to leverage Terraform code within the Morpheus platform to provision resources, in this particular case, a DynamoDB database, provided in a self-service fashion, um, understood how the integration in the Morpheus platform works as well. So as we get ready to wrap up, um, one of the, the ways to experience Morpheus for yourself, if you wanna kick the tires, downloading the, the Morpheus Community Edition uh, via the Morpheus Hub, requires a, a simple sign up and then being able to, to download the Community Edition to be able to, to experience Terraform and how that integration works. 
And then finally, if you would actually like to, to get a, a deeper walkthrough of this or any other Morpheus capabilities, schedule a demo with one of our, our sales engineers via morpheusdata.com slash demo and be able to get um, a, a deeper walkthrough of the platform, the capabilities and how it can help your organization. Appreciate those that have joined and attended. Um, hopefully it was helpful and insightful.